bloody Jesus. It's Easter. You know, so many things about Easter. So many things happen in Easter. Spend time with family, maybe. It's a public holiday, probably. I don't know which country you're from, but most Western countries, and most countries actually. There's lots of food, chocolate, Easter bunny, all that kind of stuff. And then there's a bloody Jesus. You can't forget Jesus. You probably already know that I'm a Christian, and for Christians like me, Easter is a really important day. It's all about the cross, which by the way, is the symbol of Christianity, the cross. And the message of Easter, the message of the cross, the gospel of Jesus, which is this whole message of the cross, message of Easter, is such a insane thing, if you think about it. It is crazy. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's a message that doesn't make sense. But it does. Let me explain. A few years ago, I was talking to a Muslim friend about Jesus. And you know, Jesus, not just in Christianity, he he's considered many things to many people. To some a teacher, to some a prophet, to some someone who thought interesting things that we can always learn something about. And to Muslims, Jesus is a prophet. And he was saying to me that the reason why they don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God is because it doesn't make sense for God to send his son to die on a cross and be humiliated on a death that is a death that is punishment for the worst of criminals. I remember this conversation very clearly because I thought there was such an interesting perspective on the message of the cross. And it's also the perspective that if you think about it, a lot of people would agree with him. It's humiliating. It doesn't make sense. Why would God send his son, his only son, to come and be humiliated and die on a cross like that? In fact, that's what one of the thieves that were crucified next to Jesus asked him and said, if you're really the son of God, I'm paraphrasing by the way, if you're really the son of God, you should send your angels to come and save you from here. Clearly you're not, because you are not doing that. How dumb can you be? to not do that if you can. And then the other thief was like, what are you talking about? This guy did nothing to deserve this. We, at least, we killed someone, all right? We were terrible people. We deserve to die on this cross. And you're here mocking this guy. And he said, Jesus, when you go to heaven, please remember me. And Jesus said, I will see you there. Kind of, all right, paraphrasing again. Remember, I'm paraphrasing. But this is the point of the message of the cross, is that Jesus came to die. Of course, he came to teach a message and he came to, you know, heal people and perform miracles. But that was not the reason why he came to earth. That was not the main reason. The main reason why he came was to die a bloody death on a cross. That is the reason Jesus came to earth. And that's what Easter is all about. Jesus died on a cross. You know, it's not an easy message. It's a message of death. It's a message of blood. It's a message of shedding a sacrifice on wood. On it, it, It's crazy. And even the holiday before the Christian holiday, the Jewish holiday called Passover or Pesach or something like that, it was about that as well. It was about killing a lamb and putting the blood of the lamb on the wood of the door. And if you did that, the angel of death would not come to your house. That was one of the plagues in Egypt. It went and killed a lot of people in Egypt. But the people of Israel, they killed the lamb. God told them to do this. And they put the blood of the lamb on the wood of the door. And death didn't come to them. There was only an image of what was to come. God was <laughs> telling people, this is what's coming in the future. There will be the lamb that will die and shed the blood on the cross, on the wood, to save people. And that is the message of the cross. And it's crazy. The Bible itself says that the message of the cross is crazy. In 1 Corinthians, Paul says that the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, those who are dying. But for us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You know, he's saying that the message of the cross is foolishness, is insanity. It's crazy to people who don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that God will send his only son to die on a cross for people who did not even show any repentance whatsoever. The Bible says that while we were still sinners, while we were 
is so in the wrong. Jesus died for us. It was not after we did something good. It was not after we showed a sign that maybe we're going to accept this message, you know, that surrender our life to him. It was while we were still in the wrong, God sent his son to die on the cross for us. It is crazy. It is, it is crazy. That's what the message of Easter is all about, is God sending his only son to die a terrible death on a cross so that our lives can be changed. I want to read this passage from the Bible and I want to read this because I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to paraphrase it even though I could because I remember this really well because it's one of my favorite passages of the Bible. It's from Philippians chapter 2 and it says this, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. By the way, this is a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Philippi. So it's, it's Paul talking to the church in Philippi, which made sense for them, but it, this also can make sense for us. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. And that's the part that explains so well what Jesus came to do. Who, being very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by being obedient to death, even death, on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue knowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Bloody Jesus. That's that's a crazy message. Even though I'm a Christian, even though I I I have this message in my life, I believe in all of this. And I know that Jesus died for me on that cross. It's a message that challenges me every time. Because it's not just talking about what Jesus did once that I already made a decision in my life. But it's also talking about something that happens continuously as a Christian. Which is, if Jesus, who is the Son of God, humbled himself like that. Who am I to think that I'm better than other people? Like, don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I get this wrong all the time. You can probably point out, like if you know me, even if you don't know me, you can probably point out different moments in my life when I probably thought I was better than other people. I mean, sometimes I do think I'm better than other people. <laughs> and it might even be true, okay, but that's not the point. The point is Jesus, the Son of God, even though he knew he was better than other people, he didn't go and say that to other people's faces. You know, when he was being judged by Rome and they said, oh, people say you're the king of the Jews. And he's like, well, we, you were the one saying that. He could very well say, yes, I am. I am the son of God. I'm here to save people. <laughs> but he didn't. He, <laughs> he was humble. And if Jesus, who was the son of God, was humble like that, I think we, and I include myself in that we, can all learn to be a bit more humble in our everyday lives. But also there's something about this message that anyone can take advantage of, is that Jesus he died on the cross for a reason. It was not an accident. It didn't just happen. It was planned. He knew it was going to happen. He came to earth to die on that cross. Because through his death, all the things that we do wrong can be forgiven. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, I always get this wrong, I, I swap them. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, no. If you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and conf no, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's a promise. It's what happened to me. It's what happened to many people. And it's available to everyone. Jesus didn't die in vain. It was not an accident. He was not like, oh no, gosh, we had such a perfect plan and then this happened. No, that was the perfect plan. This message of death, of blood, on a cross, that is the perfect plan. And that's a plan that doesn't make sense to a lot of people. But 
just shows how much God loves us. Once you understand that, there's no doubt. There's, there can't be any doubt of God's love because that that's an insane thing. All right, it's it's a crazy thing, and that's exactly what Jesus did. And the great thing is what happened three days after he died. In in today's world, that you know, with all these zombie movies and stories and stuff, this is even more fascinating and maybe even crazy. But Jesus, he rose from the dead. He was dead, and then he rose from the dead, and he's alive. He's alive today, and that's what gives him power to give people who believe in him a new life. He's not dead. There's no grave for us to go and adore him and worship him because he's not there. There's no place you can find his body because he's not there. And that's where the power of the message comes from. You know, as I said before, the Bible says, but the message of the gospel is foolishness. It's insanity to people who don't understand, to people who are perishing. But for me, for us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And that, that power, it does, it, it does, it's the power that can change people's lives. It's the power, it's just, it's amazing. And this is the message of Easter. This is the message of the cross. And I wish you that this Easter. I wish that you understand, if you don't yet, the power of this message. That you get past the craziness, because it is crazy. I told you, I gave you many reasons why it's a bit crazy. But if you can get past that and understand the power of that message, I can, I'm sure it will change your life. And that is just not just me saying, it's God saying. You know, I could come here and tell you some story or whatever, but that's not my story. And nothing that I said here is my story. Everything that I told you is the Bible. It's God's story. And that's how I know that that can change your life. If you're interested in knowing more about this story, more about Easter, here are links to videos of what our pastors talked about in my church this weekend there will be much more you can find out there you can also read the bible and if you have any questions you can always ask me as well i hope you enjoyed this video thanks so much for watching and i will see you tomorrow in my vlog but also whenever i make a new carlos has an opinion video